Hello and welcome to this update to Hairstrand Designer. This is version 1.42 and in this version you'll see a few changes have been made to the way that the previewer works as well as a little bit of a bug fix for loading your HDSD files. So first we're going to look at the previewer. So again you get round about 60 strands preview per set. Uh, that will gradually have a performance hit. So you can use control and mouse wheel down to decrease the definition or mouse wheel up to increase. And what you're gonna get is a rough idea of what's gonna be rendered. So if I click on this color map and render, you'll see that the previewer and the color map, they look a little bit close, but the color map's your final version. So we can go ahead and create a number of strands. We can override any lens and strand counts in here. So if I do full reduction and basically no strands, then it's all gonna work with these boxes. So if I do 15 strands here, 10 here, 50 here, 20 here, two, three, two, and then maybe some flyaways like this. And if I mouse wheel up, it's gonna give me a maximum here of 28 out of 60 possible strands. Now, the most we've got here is 50. So this third one you'll see will accumulate a bit more as we go towards 60 strands per set. But up here at the top right, there's this frames per second and it does drop quite heavily as you do this. So even though this gives you a nice idea of what you're going to get, it does have a performance hit. And you can just try different things here until you're happy. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit of waviness and minimum maximum. A little bit of variation, just mouse wheel down, sort of control mouse wheel up to increase the definition a bit. You can see that waviness is a bit more apparent. A bit of tapering, uh, we'll do some spacing. And now I can play with the algorithm influences. So this slider. If I hover over one here, it's going to affect this first set. It's going to affect the mixer and the waviness. So as I decrease that, it becomes less wavy. And if there's any taper involved, if I move it to here, it stops the taper. And if I move it further, it actually splays it out the way. It's also these three mixer values. If you want to add some of these in, we can actually de-influence that as well. Now, in a future version, I want to actually bring these mixers down here so that they can affect each set individually. You can actually go into the mixer by pressing F8 for now, and you can make a few little changes. There's three of them, so if you press up or down, you can see you can affect some of these if you want some crazy hairs press enter to come back out and you can see there's quite a lot of influence being applied to all the sets so you can de-influence this way and reverse the influence the other way You can also add a little bit of thickness variation so that some strands will be thicker than others and this controls the range of that. So in fact it's this one here so we get minimum thickness and a maximum and that applies to the variation. Now we get the thickness range which uh, affects the root and the tip. So how much it affects the root and how much it affects the tip so that you can get a kind of 
soft tapering off and it gets a little bit smaller and thinner at the end. So this is how this is going to look. I'm just going to render the color map. And as you can see, we've got something that's a little bit closer to the preview now. So that's what's mainly been changed and updated since some previous versions where it might have been a struggle to match what you're trying to achieve. The other cool thing is you can hover over one of these numbers, shift and arrow key will then move the set around. And bear in mind each set to the right overlaps each set to the left. So if you want this set to overlap this, you're just going to go to set number four and shift and left arrow and then left arrow key on its own fine tunes that and if you want really small fine tune use control and arrow key so that gives us a big bunch of hair here let's move number one over just to fill in a little bit of a gap there that gives us a whole lot of variation right, and we can even bring in some of these other ones if we wanted So I think it's going to make sense later on to have these mixers down somewhere here. I'm going to shift all this up and condense this part of the UI and make it so you get even more control. That will be hopefully the next version, uh, which may be a week or two away. So let's just move one of these over. Let's move number six. And you see that just gives us a little bit of wild here. We can also move it up or down or even change the length of it. So by default, the most length you can get, if I put in 4,000 something, that's gonna result in the maximum length is 3,800. So I'm just gonna change that to 3,200 and it just shortens it a bit. If you want more variation, we're just going to use the variation slider. And you can see how that affects everything. Right, and we get quite a strong bit of algorithm happening on these ones. I'm just going to hover over it. So it's seven, eight, nine, ten. So all of these are getting too much of the algorithm. But these would make some pretty good stragglers. And this one's going to move it over a bit. Okay, I think for number seven, we're just going to do like four strands. That looks pretty good. Mess around with the spacing. And we can change some colors here. So it's going to go for black for the background. A bit more of a saturated tone for each of these. And the root tone, let's make that more of a brown. If I hold down Alt and click, in fact, if I just press Alt, it's going to sample anything in the current color so be careful with that alt key i'm just going to make this a really dark brown and then the tip let's just do alt or click anywhere in the palette and i'm just going to make that a little bit darker This one just seems way too saturated, but you get all sorts of kind of hair. And coverage wise, you can change these. Let's do a little bit more dark for the variation. And you can click the dice here if you want something different. Uh, so you see the seed value here is zero. So we can always get back to this. 
So I click this, you see we get different ideas of how this is going to look. And we might just hit something lucky like this that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and render that. Now we're rendering 108 strands. And that's how that looks here. So if you press P, you can see the previewer and C will show you the final render. And then you can use the viewer box to see exactly how that looks at the pixel level. So we've got a whole lot of variation in thickness, maybe a bit too much. So that's this thick minimum and maximum. So I'm going to change this to one and this to about four. Uh, thickness variation I can then bring down a little bit. And I'm just going to increase this tad as well. Let's see if we roll the dice a couple more times. Okay, I'm going to go for that one. And there you have it. Once you're happy with how everything looks, it's a good idea to save your HSD file. It's simply a text file with a whole lot of different numbers in there, so you can easily change them up if you wanted that way. Make sure to save your files and any exported textures outside of the same folder as the application. That will prevent them being sent to the app data folder. So if you do that by accident, you can go to the local app data folder and look for here, Strand Designer, the current version, and you'll likely find them there. So once you're happy, you can go ahead and render out other maps. I recommend doing small groups of maps at a time to avoid any memory leaks or performance issues. So I'm going to click that and see what happens. So we got a mask map, normal map, RGB for customization. So the way that works is it's stored variations of the red. So you get two tones there. The green channel gives you your root and the blue channel gives you your tip. Perfect for some of the shaders that I've created for Unity and Unreal Engine, such as stylized hair shader for Unreal and hair shader 2 plus hair shader HDRP for Unity. We can go ahead and generate other maps. Once they're ready, they'll turn green. And then you can click and preview each one. Got your depth map gives you a whole lot of grayscale. This is good if you want to generate your own normal map. A flow map here. If you do decide to do a different kind of flow map, there are some options such as flipping the X, the Y, making it blue, or shift by hue if you want to do some kind of customized shader. You got your AO map here. Uh, you might want to blur your AO map up a little bit. So there's this apply blur button. The longer you hold this, the more it will blur. So if I just tap it a little bit, it gives it a little bit of blur. And the longer I hold that down, it's going to blur that a lot. We've got a frizz map, which basically adds noise, but kind of gives you that little kind of keratin build up that you get along a hair strand. And this can be good for specularity or some kind of roughness, um, anything like that that you've got in your shader. And it will just help create a little bit of noise. You can also use it to you know, shift the, the UVs a little bit if you wanted to do that. So that's pretty much it. Once you've got everything set up, you can go ahead and click this big button up here. And you just give it a title of what you want to call it. Uh, 
and then just choose where you want to save this to. I'm just going to save it to the your strand designer folder that I use for demoing. And I'm just going to save it here. So you'll see it flash a few times as it goes through each of these images. It's going to save 4K textures uh, without any post-processing on them other than the applied blur that I gave to the AO map. You can bring them into Photoshop and do extra passes or combine things however you like. But that's pretty much that. So if I quickly go into Photoshop here, this is just some updates to the UI, but open up for example, let's just have a look at the color map, depth map, and the AO map. So you could take the depth map and bring that in over here. And if you want, you can maybe change this to multiply or overlay is a good one and just dim it down a bit. And it'll give you a bit more variation. Later on in future versions of the Hair Strand Designer, I want to incorporate this kind of thing. But for now, some things do need a little bit of post process. I'm going to take the AO map and bring it in here. Of course, if you're using shaders, then you don't really have to do this. So the AO map's just helping a bit. You might want to do Control L for a little bit of levels adjustment, just to tighten up some of those tones. And there you go. That's going to be your color map. And you've got every other kind of map there if you want to use those. I'm going to open up the normal map and have a look at that. So the normal map, works a little bit different as an anisotropic kind of effect built into it. So it should give you some interest and shine on the hairs. But I'll be exploring a different way to generate normal maps inside hair strand design in the future using shaders, which may give you a different kind of option. And that could be interesting. Now, if you're concerned about some of the pixelation at the edges, you shouldn't worry too much about that because this matches the mask. And none of this was going to be seen in the end, but if you really are worried, a nice pass is the oil paint pass. Just make sure you've got, in your preferences under performance, that you've got the GPU uh, enabled here, and that you're working in this color layer. If you do other, sorry, stylize oil paint, and you set this quite low, both of these quite low, just turn anything else off, no lighting, and maybe 0.3 and 0.3 is what I recommend. If you click that, it's just going to blur things up a little bit. So I'm going to copy that there. And just undo it until we get that back and paste that back in. And you can kind of go between those until you're happy with the, the kind of blur that you might get to help avoid any of those sharp edges. But it doesn't matter all that much. The hairs are going to be so fine and there's going to be anti-lacing, filtering in the renderer that you're using anyway. But that's pretty much it. So, yep, you can check out Hairstrand Designer on ArtStation. It's also on Glamroad and it's on CG Trader and a few other places. But I recommend going through ArtStation. It's probably the best price-wise and where I can give you one-to-one -one support. If you're struggling with anything, you can message me. There's also a Discord channel, uh, which is here. And if you want to invite to that, just let me know. And thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.